being made. Box is almost open. What kind of cool game is this? <laughs> you would think I've never opened a box before. All right, let's talk. Good afternoon. What's going on everybody, how's it going? It's Miles, welcome back. Hope you guys have been doing well, washing your hands, doing all the things so that maybe one day I can look forward to moving amps up the stairs from this room to go play a show outside in front of people and not on a Zoom live stream or something. Today I'm doing something that I don't normally do and I didn't really picture myself ever really doing because the concept of it seems kind of like self-absorbed and ridiculous to me. Um, and what I'm doing today is celebrating a new, new guitar, guitar day. day. You know, like to me, between unboxing videos and like new Guitar Day stuff, it comes off as kind of arrogant and like, look what I got. Kind of like, like I've said before, it reminds me of the idea of inviting your friends over for Christmas morning so they can watch you open your presents. But I felt today was significant, at least to some degree, because what I have to show you guys is something different. Something that you might be interested in if you haven't heard about it at all before. And that is this guy. This is the Hellraiser C6 from Schecter. And while they market it as a baritone guitar, it comes strung with bass six strings. Meaning that all six of the strings are essentially bass strings. Um, they're all wound. And when I first got this guitar, I didn't play it right away because I didn't know how long it had been in the back of the UPS truck that dropped it off. So I figured I'd let it get acclimated to the temperature in the room for a little bit. But I'd like put it on a stand and like I just walked by and brushed the strings real quick and I heard just how low everything is. And immediately I was like, oh man, I gotta play this thing. I haven't had too much time to mess around with it, but I've been noodling around with it here and there. I posted a video up on my Instagram of just like a track that I made up using this guitar, which by the way, if you haven't already, go and follow me over there. Just, just saying. And um, it's been a fun experience so far. But before we get into playing this thing, let's just check out some of the specs in regards to the instrument itself. So this is a Korean made 30 inch scale guitar from Schecter. It's got a mahogany body. The top is a flame maple. And by far, this is the nicest finish I have on any guitars that I own. Um, the binding is abalone and it just like once a light hits this thing it looks really really nice and i didn't think that i would be truly captivated by the finish on this guitar considering that i work at a music store but you know even with seeing all the guitars that i see on a regular basis seeing this one i was like really kind of struck just by how nice it is in terms of the finish the neck is a three-piece mahogany neck with carbon fiber rods going down through it um, we have locking tuners, they're Schecter locking tuners, a Graftech nut, so that's pretty nice. 24 extra jumbo frets, which is going to come in handy when you're fretting notes on this guitar with thicker strings. Um, you don't want to have any unnecessary buzzing going on, so having the extra jumbo frets is going to keep the clearance of the string when it's vibrating while you're fretting a note on the neck. A Tone Pros bridge with brass saddles. I think this, aside from my telly, is my only hardtail guitar, and I've never had like a tunematic style bridge before, so it's it's new for me. And as far as electronics are concerned, for pickups we got an EMG 89R in the neck position, and in the bridge position it's an 81TW, which I would imagine that those pickups were selected for this guitar because you also 
have the ability to coil tap uh, both pickups with the push-pull knobs that you have for both volume pots. The pickup selector switch is a three-way. So bridge, middle, neck. Don't need anything super crazy in that regard. And aside from that, that really is it. The contoured top of the body is nice, you know, in terms of just sitting down and playing the thing. Um, you have so much access with the cutaway for these wings that are over here at the bottom of the uh, neck joint. And um, it just feels really nice to hold this thing. It doesn't feel like it's 30, like a 30 inch scale instrument. It feels like I'm just holding a regular guitar uh, or better yet, a guitar that has more frets than I'm used to. <laughs> I think part of that comes from the fact that the bottom of the bridge is set so low on the body's front of the guitar, kind of compensating for length of the string so that it's not all just like normally set where it would be and the neck is gigantic. So I think, but enough of all the talking. Let's, uh, let's take this thing for a spin. Let's see what's going on. Here we go. So already it feels really comfortable. Like it's not this foreign feeling from what I experienced holding a regular guitar. Even with the longer scale length, it doesn't feel longer. Not to me anyway. Let's see here. So run the bridge pickup. Now the neck. Let's do... See what's happening with this whole coil tap thing how that's going to sound so let me see here <sighs> one day i'm gonna have like an endorsement deal and a signature guitar through schecter and it'll make me the happiest boy in the world and it's going to be the first lefty model that they make where the wiring for the volume uh, pots are actually going to the pickups that they're supposed to be going to. I don't know why it's so hard to have the neck pickup volume be above where the bridge position volume knob is. Yet somehow this volume knob is going to this. I don't get it. That's just always how it's been with every lefty guitar I've gotten from Schecter. They play great, but I always have to get everything rewired. And uh, I don't wanna. I dream of a day of having a guitar that I could take out of the box and it just doesn't need any work. But I guess that day is not today. But anyway. <laughs> It's definitely a little bit quieter. Which, I mean, is to be expected. Sounds nice, though. And... Let's do the same for the bridge. Sure. <laughs> 
So I guess if you are in a bind for a gig and you need a bass player, this will cover it. I think uh, rolling off on some of the tone would definitely help kind of round out the sound a little bit. But otherwise, you're definitely covering the frequency range. And in that case, you wouldn't be worrying too much about chords, I don't think. But yeah, cool. Try a little bit more gain. Awesome. Bends are tough. <laughs> As I said before, Schechter markets this instrument as a baritone guitar. However, it's slightly longer than traditional baritone guitar scale, and it's strung with basic strings. Now, if you don't know what the difference between those two instruments are, a baritone guitar is typically a longer scale guitar, about 27, 28 inch scale, and is typically tuned to B standard, sometimes A standard. And a bass six basically being a six string bass. A uh, 30 inch scale and six strings tuned to standard tuning as you would have on a guitar. However, you can certainly have a baritone guitar that is a 30 inch scale. And if you want to learn more about baritone guitars or bass six instruments or even extended range basses, everything that has to do with low frequencies and heaviness, I would suggest you go and check out my buddy Scott, better known as The Bun. His whole channel is devoted to this stuff, and he is a wealth of knowledge about this subject. Honestly, before I even bought this instrument, I, I reached out to him, I shot him a text, and I was like, what should I do? What should I do? Because part of the main reason why I bought this thing in the first place is that 
you don't find these instruments very often, let alone in lefty. So I figured when's the next time am I gonna find a baritone guitar that's a lefty? So it had to be done. I, I bought it off Reverb and I've been thrilled with it ever since. And although the thing came wired backward, and so the controls aren't lined up where they should be, I see a great benefit from having the ability to split the coils of the pickups with the uh, push-pull pots that are on the volume knobs. Um, it especially comes in handy when you're playing stuff that's like super duper clean and you wanna have a full sounding chord or if you're just doing single note stuff. And um, as far as the feel of the entire instrument overall, it doesn't feel large and awkward to hold and play. Everything, including the spacing of the frets, still feels pretty um, relative to a regular scale guitar. And when it comes to playing heavy stuff, it's a no-brainer. It's perfect. And especially if you're the type of player who does not do a lot of solo stuff, but is more of a rhythm player, it's definitely a guitar that is going to be suitable and could possibly bypass the option of having to go out and get an extended range instrument with multiple strings that you're probably not going to be even touching. But everything you've seen so far was just noodling. Let's see what it sounds like in terms of like actual playing with other instrumentation involved. Here we go. All right, guys, so that is, no, this feels weird. <laughs> so yeah, guys, that is the Hellraiser C6 from Schechter. Definitely a unique instrument, but one that you could probably find some benefit from no matter what kind of music you play. It serves as a cool experimental instrument if you're just trying to branch out into lower frequency ranges on the guitar, but you don't want to go completely in on an eight or nine string. It can also serve as an additional timbre to instrumentation on a song that already has guitar and bass on it. So definitely a worthwhile thing to consider. And other than that, guys, that's all I got for today. I thank you guys for sticking around, checking this video out. Hope you found it to be interesting and informative. Um, if you want to find out more about this instrument, I'll leave a link to Schechter's website down below. You can check it out there. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It's a free, easy way to help support my channel. But if you would like to support the channel further, I'll also leave a link to my Patreon down below as well. It just helps with kind of keeping things going with this channel, making it easier for me to upgrade stuff, making it easier for me to commit more time to editing and shooting videos. So if you'd like to be a part of that, I'll leave a link for that down below as well. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks once again. Hope you guys stay safe. Keep playing. Peace.